Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Way back in 2011, I posted my very first YouTube video. The subject was using telescopic fiberglass masts in conjunction with ham radio antennas. In the years that have passed since then, I've had a lot more practical experience and have learned additional tips. And the idea behind this video that you're about to watch is to add on to the information presented in that early initial attempt. Let's take a look. One of the first things a new amateur radio operator learns is that getting an antenna up high and above surrounding objects is important for good station performance. When operating HF portable, a common practice is to put a wire as high as possible into a tall tree. There are some potential pitfalls with relying upon this approach. For example, in some locations you may not have access to tall trees that you can throw a wire into. Even in situations where you do have access to trees, there might be such a bramble of branches that good placement of your wire can be a time-consuming process. Providing you are able to find a suitable clear branch to throw your wire over, you could have an issue getting the wire high enough to clear that perfect branch. I'm not even taking into consideration wire snags and damage to the tree that can result from repeated efforts to get your wire up where you want it. I will acknowledge some of the alternative antenna launching systems that can make the job of getting your antenna up to a great height in a tree relatively easy. However, those systems involve the purchase of expensive accessory equipment that can be prone to failure and in some cases pose a safety hazard. And finally, let's not forget the time spent trying to raise your antenna when you could be doing what you came out to do, and that's communicate. For these reasons, I prefer the comparatively simple and reliable approach of using fiberglass telescopic poles to support my portable HF wire antennas. These poles are compact for easy transport to the operating site. They are deployable in many different types of terrain. With a bit of practice, you can have a pole up in a matter of minutes. The fact that these poles are made of fiberglass means they will not detune an antenna the way metal poles do. When used with a good antenna, telescopic fiberglass poles will provide excellent results. A key characteristic of telescoping fiberglass masts is that they taper toward the top. They get thinner and less rigid as they get higher. Since telescopic poles get thinner as they get higher, the top portion of the pole will flex in strong winds. Good quality fiberglass poles are made of material that allows for flexing. The ability to flex is a positive since in windy conditions the pole will take much of the stress rather than the antenna itself. This characteristic is important as most wire antennas cannot survive high tension. Further, in permanent antenna installations in wooded areas, broken tree branches often fall onto wire antennas, or in winter, freezing rain can coat the antenna in ice. In these situations, the pole will bend and take much of the strain, in many cases preventing damage to the antenna. Given that the poles are thinnest at the top, the installation must take into consideration that the ability for the pole to support weight at its tip is pretty much non-existent. Care must be taken to avoid overstressing the top sections. Due to this, running coax to a feed point positioned too high on the pole will result in excessive bending and loss of installation height. This extreme bending could also fracture the pole. The rule is to keep heavy loads farther down the pole where the less flexible sections can more easily support the weight. Of course, this would also apply to small VHF-UHF antennas that are affixed directly to the pole. Let's take a look at the most common antenna applications for telescopic masts. The first configuration would be for the mast to support the feed point of a dipole. The top of most masts will not be able to support the weight of the feed point, plus the coaxial cable, so as addressed earlier, place the feed point farther down the pole. The second configuration option is as a support for an end-fed sloper. 
the preferred choice here is to tie off the far end of the end fed to the tip of the pole, which dependent upon the thickness of the fiberglass will result in the pole bending due to the weight of the antenna. Optionally, tie off the far end of the end fed farther down the pole, resulting in less bending of the mast and potentially greater height. Please note if you are careful not to pull the antenna too tight and the pole is of good quality, the pole will not break. The third option is to fasten the far end of the end fed antenna to the top of the mast and bring the antenna wire straight down the pole. Any extra length can be pulled away at or near the bottom of the pole. Keep this extra length away from any metal objects. This option gives a vertical configuration that is useful for a low angle DX operation. A fourth option is to use two or more poles to support a horizontal antenna, such as a horizontal dipole, a loop, or a half square. In this configuration, my recommendation is to tie off the ends one or two sections down from the top to minimize bending of the poles. Take note that temperature extremes can cause the pole sections to expand or contract. In warm weather, a pole section that is not twisted tightly enough can slip, causing itself and the other sections above it to quickly slide down into the center of the pole. This could potentially damage the antenna or the coax, or even cause guy lines to fail, bringing the pole and antenna crashing down. There are a few methods I have employed over the years to keep the pole sections from slipping. The simplest method is to use good quality electrical tape around the exposed joint of each section, overlapping the top of the lower section and the bottom of the higher section. Use of good quality tape will keep the sections from slipping down when deployed. Utilizing this method will also keep rainwater from seeping through the section joints which could lead to future slippage of the pole sections. A downside of using electrical tape is that in permanent installations, upon removing the tape, the coating of the pole may come off. An alternative to using electrical tape is to use rubber strips with zip ties. The primary benefit of this method is that there is no tape to leave sticky residue on the pole or contribute to peeling off the coating on the pole. When running coax down the pole from a feed point, you must fasten the coax to the pole. If you don't, the coax will hang directly down from the feed point and put a big bend in the pole. You will lose a lot of height this way and put a lot of stress on the pole. You can either use rubber bands, electrical tape, zip ties, or velcro straps to fasten the coax to the pole. Elastic velcro straps can be found at dollar stores and are adequate for temporary stations. I would not trust them to survive for extended periods. To collapse your pole, remove the materials you are using to keep the sections from slipping. Then grab the lower section, grab the upper section tightly and twist it while pushing downward to get the pole to collapse. If you encounter any pole sections which are stuck and will not respond to twisting, I've got a few tips for you. Tip number one, use rubber gardening gloves available for a few dollars at any dollar store to help provide extra grip while you're twisting the sections. If that doesn't work, it's time for the heavy artillery. I have found that gently tapping the top section with a rubber mallet will do the trick. Conversely, you could also use a soft piece of wood. In all cases that I've encountered in the field, cold weather, hot weather, everything in between, one of these has worked for me and I've been able to get the pole collapsed. So it's the end of the deployment. Your pole is on the ground and headed home with you. Treat it carefully. Fiberglass poles are susceptible to breakage if impacted with force. Don't throw poles around and ensure they are stored where the chance of something being dropped upon them is minimal. Just a few closing notes on telescopic fiberglass poles for ham radio use. They have been a godsend for me in my portable operations. They're quick to set up, 
they're compact when not in use, they're durable, they've survived uh, full winters out in my backyard. Uh, the, some of them can be a bit pricey, certainly the, the higher that you go with them, but the bottom line is they bring a lot of utility and they provide something that is not always available and that is good enough height to get a full-size antenna up and in the clear where it will do the most good, which is really important for folks operating low power in the field. That's all for this time. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. It's your likes, it's your subscriptions, and it's the comments that you leave below that really fuel my passion and keep me coming out to make more videos. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack. Get outdoors and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM.